Hi everyone, we are going to continue our past paper discussion for the subject Business and Accounting Studies. Today we are going to look at the past paper December 2018 and we are going to cover question number 21 to 30. Question number 21. Select the correct statement from the following related to the principle of double entry. The principle of double entry is Increases debit, decreases credit is relevant to liabilities account. Now they are saying if it's a liability and a liability increases, it should be debited, which is wrong. A liability increase is recorded as a credit because that's something that you owe to somebody else. Hence the credit section will increase. Increases debit, decreases credit is relevant to equity. Again, that is wrong as well. If equity increases, the increase is recorded on the credit side. So, 2 is also incorrect. Increases credit and decreases debit is relevant to the income account. Now, income account is the inflow to a company. So here if the income increases you will credit it and if the income decreases that's why for expenses you debit correct. So answer 3 seems to be the correct answer but let's see the fourth one as well. Increases credit decreases debit is relevant to asset accounts. No that's wrong. Why asset increases are debited. So here the correct answer is answer 3. Use the following information to answer questions number 22 and 23. Some transactions occurred in passing the book publishers are as follows. A. Purchasing a printing machine of rupees 250,000 on credit. B. Purchasing printing papers of rupees 50,000 from Ruan on credit. Now because they are publishers, printing papers is their stock. So you need to remember that. Okay. C. Purchasing furniture of rupees 100,000 from Morotu Furniture Company on credit. Finally, D. Selling a stock of books for rupees 160,000 on credit, which cost 100,000. Question 22. The transaction recorded in purchase journal is. Now, let's filter the four transactions and see their prime entry books. Purchasing a printing machine of rupees 250,000. Now here it is a capital investment that you are doing because you are a publisher. It's a non-current asset that you are buying. Now this will get recorded in the general journal. Transaction B. Purchasing printing papers of rupees 50,000. Now this is the stock of the company. For this business passing the book publishers, it is the stock inventory. Now this will get recorded in the purchaser's journal or the creditor's journal. Here yeah, they are bought on credit. Transaction C, purchasing furniture of rupees 100,000 on credit again. Again, this is a non-current asset that you are purchasing. This will also get recorded in the general journal. Selling a stock of books. For 160,000 on credit which cost 100,000. Now here they are talking about the selling of books on credit. The sales is what they are focusing about. So uh, here it will be sales journal. Now the, questions are, the question is asking you what transaction is recorded in the purchase journal? Transaction B answer 2. Question 23. Select the answer that shows the source documents for above A, B and D transactions in the correct order. Now A is where you record in general journal, B is when you record in purchase journal, D is when you record in sales journal. Now when you are recording in general journal, always the source document is a journal voucher. So A answer is journal voucher. So out of the four options here you could see only answer 1 and 2 starts with journal voucher. So your correct answer is between these two choices. Final one is D. D they are talking about a sales coming to the sales journal. What is the source document for that? Your invoice. So 
the very last option should be sales invoice so there itself you can see the correct answer is to journal voucher purchase invoice and then sales invoice question 24 the credit balance of the bank statement of Kapila's business for the month of October 2018 was rupees 12,000. What is this to the business? Is it an asset to the business or is it a liability to the business? Is it an asset to the bank or it's a bank overdraft of the business? Now, if it's an asset to the business, the business will record it in the debit balance. Okay. Now they are maintaining a bank account. They have put their money in the bank. Now if somebody, if you make a deposit to the bank, it is an asset to you. But for the bank, it is a liability. Why? They should pay you whenever you ask. It's like you are giving, you are lending money to the bank. So, for the bank, it always carries a credit balance. So, in the bank statement here, it is a credit balance, which means it's an asset to Kapila's business still and to the bank, it is a liability. So, answer 3 is incorrect. Answer 4 is also incorrect. Why? It's not an overdraft. Still, there is money in the account. So, answer 2 is also incorrect. Why? It's not a liability of the business. It is an asset of the business. Answer 1. Answer questions number 25 and 26 using the following information. The petty cash balance with petty cashier of Sandun business as at 31st July 2018 was rupees 2500. So, this is the balance at the month end. Following are the balances of analysis columns of petty cash book for the month of July. So, they have stationery, travelling, refreshment and miscellaneous. So, the total of this will aggregate to 7,500. 7,500 is the total of the expense. You have the balance at the month end at 2,500. So, looks like the impressed of the petty cash is 10,000. So, you will work this out while you read. Sandun decided to increase the value of the petty cash impressed up to rupees 50,000. Now, this will be increased up to rupees 15,000 from 1st August. Now, question 25. The value of the petty cash expenses for the month of July 2018 in this business is of course, the addition of all four transactions, which is 7,500, answer 2. The value of the petty cash reimbursement as at 1st August 2018 is. Now, the trick here is they are asking for the reimbursement. By how much should Sandun reimburse at the month end? A lot of students made an error here. They jumped into answer 2. Thinking they are talking about the increased amount. But here the balance is 12, 2,500. From 2,500 it has to be topped up to 15,000. So the reimbursement has to be done for the expense of 7,500 and the increase of 5,000. So reimbursement will be 12,000. 500 answer 3. Question 27. Select the answer which shows the source document and prime entry book used in recording the employing of additional capital of rupees 5000 by the owner in the correct order. Now here information is limited. They are saying additional capital of rupees 5000 by owner. It doesn't say by what form. We assume it by default we assume that it is in a cash form. So you are ideally looking for a prime entry book to be cash book and if it's cash book your source document is a receipt. So 
1 is relayed, the answer seems to be correct. 2, they are saying general journal incorrect. 3, they are saying general journal incorrect. 4 is also receipt and cash book. That also seems to be correct. But 1 and 2, same answer. Order is different. You need to write it in the correct order. Source document first, prime entry book next. So the correct answer here is answer 4. Source document is receipt. Prime entry book is the cash book. Now, another way that you could tackle this MCQ, if you don't know the answer, if you are getting confused, is you know that the second answer is a prime entry book. So, in the given four option, filter out what answers have the prime entry book as the last. So, here, general journal and cash book. So, of course, correct answer is between three and four. If it's a non-current asset, yes, it will come to general journal. But if it's general journal, your source document has to be voucher. Here it says receipt, which is wrong. So the correct answer is receipt and cash book answer 4. Question 28. The total of the debit column was rupees 800,000. And the credit column was rupees 825,000 in a trial balance prepared as at 31st March 2018. An accounting error which caused this difference is. Now you need to find the error that could have resulted in this issue. Now in the trial balance you have the debit column and the credit column. So here debit is at 800,000. Credit is at 825,000. Now what could have resulted in this error? Two things. One is a balance that should be recorded in the credit side has been increased by 25,000. It has been inflated. Or an entry or an account which should be in the debit account has been Reduced by 25,000. Okay. So with that understanding let us get into the answer. Increasing the total of discount allowed account by rupees 25,000. Now discount allowed account is an expense account. Expense account comes to the debit side. Now if a debit side account is already increased by 25,000. Will, will it result in this error? No. So, answer 1 is incorrect. 2. Increasing the total of sales account by rupees 25,000. Now, sales is a credit balance account. So, it should fall into the credit column. So, that is correct. Now, when that is inflated by 25,000, yes, credit column has a chance of being increased by 25,000. So, looks like answer is answer 2. But let us see other two options as well. Increasing the total of purchase account by rupees 25,000. Now purchase account is another expense account. Hence it should fall to the debit column. If it is falling to the debit column and you increase it by 25,000, this error could not have happened. So 3 is also incorrect. Decreasing the total of discount received account by rupees 25,000. Now discount received is like an income to the business. So this will fall into the credit column. But now the account is correct. Something that falls into the credit column. But here they are talking about a decrease. If you are decreasing your credit side account by 25,000. Will this error would have caused? No. So the correct answer here is answer 2. Question 29. The stock of rupees 45,000 purchased by a business from Sumanadasa on credit has been recorded in Sumanadasa's account as rupees 54,000. Okay. So now there is an error that has happened. The prime entry book to rectify this error is now the error has already occurred. You need to rectify this. Alright. So if you are going to rectify this. The prime entry that you are going to use. Is the 
General journal. So answer 1. Question 30. From the following transactions of the Sesatha Sports Club. The one which is not included in the income and expenditure account is. Now income and expenditure account to a not-for-profit business is like the profit and loss account. Because they are not a profit oriented uh, business entity, you call it the income and expenditure account. Okay. So with that understanding, let's see the four options. Receipt of rupees 1000 from selling newspapers. Now they are a sports club. They have sold newspapers and received 1000. That's like a sundry income. Now when you have that sundry income, yes, that will come into the income and expenditure account. Purchasing sports equipment of rupees 15,000. Now this is a capital good or non-current asset like for their sports club. Capital good acquisition. This doesn't get involved as an expenditure. It's like an investment from their point of view. So looks like answer 2 is the correct answer here. Let's see the other two options as well. Donation received of rupees 5000. Donation received is like an income to the business. So this will also be included in the income and expenditure account. Paid transportation expense of rupees 2500. This is an expense. So this will also be recorded in the income and expenditure account. They are asking you what is not included. So the correct answer is answer. Too. I hope this video was helpful to you. Thank you for listening and subscribe and support us for more videos.